Hi, I'm Peter from Delphi. Today we're going to explore the three key differences between brakes on conventional combustion engine vehicles, ICEs, and those on electric vehicles, EVs. This end of the brake system is the same, whether for an ICE-powered vehicle or an EV. The equivalent EV system may be slightly operated because of the additional weight of the vehicle, but the operation remains the same. The service and maintenance requirements may be different though, and I'll point those out as we look at the differences between EV and many hybrid brake systems. But before we look at those differences, let's first understand the power flow of an EV. This is a power unit from a Nissan. The top part is the power distribution module. This connects directly to the high voltage battery and distributes the power to other modules, including the inverter. The inverter is here, taking the DC voltage from the battery and converting it into three phase AC to drive the motor. If you're uncertain about three phase AC, don't worry. It's enough to understand that the inverter converts power from the battery into power suitable to drive the motor. This then drives the wheels through a reduction gearbox and a differential. If you want to learn more about three-phase AC power for EV vehicles, the Delphi Academy is a great resource. More details about that at the end of the video. For Tesla-specific vehicles, we also have in-depth videos on how to replace the brake discs and pads on Tesla Model S, and also how to bed the brakes in. You can find links to those in the description. Now, let's get into the three differences between conventional and EV braking. Number one is how EVs use regeneration to slow the vehicle. For example, you reach the top of a hill in your electric car, and now there's a steep downhill section. You lift off the throttle so that the car doesn't accelerate beyond a safe speed. Now, an ICE vehicle allows for engine braking because of the compression in the cylinders. The EV provides the same effect by making the motor hard to turn. Since the road wheels are connected to the motor, the effect is to slow the car down. To do this, the EV uses the drive motor as a generator. The inverter converts the power that is generated to DC, which goes back to the battery. The generator is hard to turn, and so the vehicle slows down. The more power generated and fed to the battery equates to a bigger braking effect. The level of regeneration is controlled by the inverter. So, in an EV, regeneration provides deceleration, and, at the same time, put some energy back into the high voltage battery. Many EVs allow the driver to select the level of regeneration, and some, like this Model Y, allow for single pedal driving. When this is selected, the brake pedal is only really used when hard braking is needed. The throttle pedal becomes more of a speed control rather than a power control. In terms of deceleration, Release the throttle a little and the car slows down. Release it completely and the car comes to a smooth stop. So the key takeout here is that ICE vehicles rely more on conventional hydraulic brakes to slow down, whereas EV vehicles with regeneration use them much less. The second point of difference is that regeneration is also used to slow the car when the brake pedal is pressed. For the first part of the brake pedal travel, the input shaft here is not actually connected to the master cylinder, i.e. the conventional hydraulic brakes. The pedal feels like the brakes are being applied, but really a pedal position sensor determines the position and rate of movement of the pedal. And if possible, regeneration is used to reduce the speed. Of course, if the brake pedal is pushed harder, the shaft operates the master cylinder and the conventional brakes are engaged. These two major points of difference massively reduce the use of hydraulic brakes. This has implications. Brake pads and discs tend to last longer on EVs. Some vehicles use their brakes so little that problems with sticking components or corrosion arise before new pads are needed. 
Another implication is our third point of difference. New brake pads on EVs take longer to bed in, making it harder to achieve effective operation. Performance can also be reduced by contaminants building up, affecting the disc's friction surface. This is because friction braking is usually self-cleaning, but because the hydraulic brakes are acting as a backup system, this cleaning doesn't happen as often. That's why we've developed these Delphi brake pads that have been engineered to provide instant friction and exceptional performance straight out of the box. So when servicing EV or hybrid brakes, do keep all these differences in mind because they will affect how you inspect the vehicle. Don't just look at the pad and disc thickness, check the operation of the caliper sliders. Make sure the pads are free to move on the pistons. Have a good look around for contamination and corrosion. When fitting new pads, remember that the first part of the brake pedal travel may not engage the brakes, so don't rely on this to bed them in. Finally, consider fitting EV-specific brake pads that are engineered to overcome these challenges. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos, then be sure to follow us on social media or visit the Masters of Motion online hub. And for more expert-led courses, then why not check out the Delphi Academy? See you next time.